Welcome back, Math 20-2. Today we're looking at measures of dispersion. Well, we're going to start off with a comparison between the average temperatures in a year for Nanaimo and Toronto. So here we have every month in their average temperature for Nanaimo, and here we have every month in their average temperature for Toronto. If we do a calculation, we add all of these up and divide them by 12, we're going to get 9.5 is the mean for both of them. Okay? And also, if we find the median, the middle temperature, we're going to end up getting 9 degrees as well for both of them. Once you organize it, find the middle. But by looking at this graph, we can tell right away that Toronto, the white dots, are more dispersed than Nanaimo. They have a bigger range. If you look at this, they go very cold to very warm. Whereas Nanaimo goes from cool to warm, whereas this one's very cold to hot. So there's a bigger dispersion. Now, what we have done before, and you've done a long time ago, and years before, is you found the range of this. Now the range is very simple. You just go from your largest point, and you subtract your smallest point. So we take here, for Nemaimo, the largest point, which is 18, and we subtract the smallest point, which is 3, which gives us 15 degrees. Now we're going to find the range for Toronto. The range for Toronto, our largest point is 23 and our smallest is negative 4. So that gives us 27 degrees is the range. So they vary, one varies between 15 degrees and the other one varies between 27 degrees, the range. This looks great most of the time. We could just go to max and min and figure and subtract them. But now there are also times where we cannot do this. For instance, if we have one or two data points which are way out of black, they don't always work. So what we do is we do something called the standard deviation. Now the standard deviation is finding the average distance away from the mean and looking at relationships between that. Okay? So right here, this page here, is just describing standard deviation a bit more. So standard deviation is a measure that describes the variation or spread between values and the mean of the distance. Well, let's look at the formula here. We're going to compare this constantly to the formula. If I look at this, sigma stands for standard deviation if we're looking at a population. S is if we're just looking at a sample space. So they're pretty much the same thing. It depends on what we're looking at. Now, the population, uh, the standard deviation of population can be determined using this formula. But now remember I said it is the average distance or the average variation or the spread between from the mean. So how far away the average point is from the mean. So we look at this, we have x. This is my any point, okay, or any data that we're looking at. And we're going to go our data subtract from the mean, okay? And this fancy symbol here means the sum. So it wants the sum of all of our data subtracted from the mean. But what do we have to do each of these? We also are going to square it, okay? So that kind of makes sense. We want our data subtracted from our mean why? Because it's the difference from the mean. We're finding the difference from the mean. Then we square each of these deviations from the mean. Then we're going to add up the sum of all those squares. Then we're going to divide it by how many we have. So that's finding the average. So we're adding up all the differences from the mean. Then we're dividing it by how many there are, which is our average. Then we're going to square root that, which kind of makes sense because we're just Finding the average, the reason why we square it is so it's positive. If I said x subtract the mean, and sometimes we're going to have bigger, sometimes we're going to have smaller, so if I add those, what's going to end up happening? We're going to end up having all negatives, and we might get a zero standard deviation, which doesn't make sense, because you could have some that are bigger, some are smaller, but it's perfectly balanced with zero, which will not work. So that's why what we're going to do is we add them, or we find the differences of each mean, uh, from the mean, from each point from the mean, find the difference, and then we square that number. And then we add them all up, then we divide it, because we want to find the average by how many points from the mean we looked at, and then we square root all that because we squared it earlier, and this will give us our standard deviation, or our spread from the mean, how our items vary from the mean, okay? Here we go. Our first question is, the heights of the Cobras basketball team are given in the diagram. So here's my heights, they're given in this diagram, and 
it says calculate the mean height. So it wants us to first calculate the average height. Well, that's pretty simple. All I have to do is add all these up. So I'm going to go 170 plus 182 plus 193. And there's two of those, so I'm going to multiply that by 2 plus 212. And we're dividing this by how many players are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We divide that by 5. And that's going to give me my mean. So I'm just going to calculate that out. Oh, 170 plus 182 plus 193. And then we're going to go plus 212. Enter. Now we're going to divide that by 5. And I get 190 is my mean. Hopefully I did that right. So 190 centimeters is my mean. And that is mu. Okay? So now it says uh, calculate the standard deviation using the formula. So here we're going to use the formula. This is the long way. We're going to show you a shortcut later on. Now we have 170. We're looking at this data point from the mean. So if I go 170, subtract the mean, well that's going to give me negative 20. Right? 170 subtract 190 gives me negative 20. 182 subtract 190 gives me negative 8. 193 subtract 190 gives me 3. 193, 3. And then 212 will give me 22. So that's all my different, my differences, my distances, or my spreads from the mean, which is standard deviation, but it wants your average spread. So these are all my spreads from the means. So we I square this, I'm going to get 400. This one here is going to give me 64. This is going to give me 9. This is going to give me 9. And this one I think is 484. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, 484. Okay. So now it wants us to find the totals of each. So we're going to find the totals of all of this. So if I added this up, it's going to look funny. We're going to have 20 minus 8 is negative 28, negative 28. If I add that up, it's 0, which means we're 0 away from the mean. Well, when we add all the numbers up from one side to the other side of the mean, it should always equal 0. That's why you must square it, now they're positive. Otherwise, you're always going to get 0, so your spread from the mean is 0. Therefore, we have to square it. Now, when I add all these up, I'm going to get 884, uh, sorry, 884, then we have 548, 548 plus 18 is going to be, I'm just going to put it in, is 566, I believe, hopefully I didn't make a mistake, so we have 566, alright, so that is the sum of all of those. Now, to continue it, I know that this here is equal to 566. Okay? Now we have to divide it by, and we want the square root of this, and we're going to divide it by how many players are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we square root that. So we have to go 566 divided by 5, and then we have to square root my answer, which will give me 10.6. Okay? Now, here's a special note. So my mean is 10.6 centimeters. All right? Now, that just tells you the distance apart, or sorry, your standard deviation is equal to 10.6 centimeters. So it is not required for this course that we calculate this manually. We are going to be able to do it all the way. So all this is saying is most of the players, 33%, on the curve like this, 33% or 68% are plus or minus 10.6 centimeters of the player for you to get the best standard deviation. The following instructions here, I'm going to have you guys go over this and you're going to do it yourself, is how you're going to calculate the standard deviation using the calculator. We did it the long way here, but it's a lot faster using the calculator because that's all we really need to do. So here we're going to go over this and we're going to use the calculator for this first question. 
Starting off, we're going to verify the mean and standard deviation from the class in example one. So let's verify the mean and standard deviation. So we're going to go to stat. We have to edit our list. Ooh, I have to clear them. Clear this too. Don't never delete them. So I want to put back in all of my data points. And I have my basketball players right here. So I have 170. Enter, I have 182. I have 193, 193, and 212. And we're going to check my medium mode, make sure I did them right, and I did it by mentally. I'm going to go back to stat, go over, calculate, and variable stats. Oh. And push it again. I have to delete this one because there isn't one there. There we go. So here it says my mean is 190. And that's exactly what we got. We didn't calculate standard deviation, or standard deviation, it says here is. Ah, here it says the standard deviation is 13.8. So I might have made a little mistake adding it up. If I look at this, I think I made a slight mistake adding it up here. So I should really double check this. So I'm going to go over this and double check. So I'm going to go 400 plus 64 plus 9 plus 9 plus 484 is equal to, oh, sorry, that's 966. There we go. Divided by 5, 193.2. And I'm going to square root my answer. I'm going to get 13.8. 13.9. Sorry, I made a mistake adding it up there. Good thing I double checked with the calculator. All right. So we continue this, and we are going to go. So we found, oh, there's stat. Variable stat. And we find out here, we have the same thing. So I get 13.9 is my standard deviation. It's just this one here. See with the little symbol on it? Standard deviation is this guy here. 13.9 is your standard deviation. And your mean is exactly the same, is 190, and so on. So each player grows by five centimeters in the next year without doing any statistical calculation. Explain how you determine the change in mean height. So what is going to be the change in mean height? Well, the average height of the players is still going to be 190, or it's going to increase, because every player goes up, my height is going to be 195 centimeters. That is going to be my mean. Now the next part says the standard deviation of the heights. Well, does that change? Did everyone change their distance from the mean? If everyone went up by five, their distance from the mean to players is exactly the same. So there is no change. Standard deviation, is going to stay the same. It's going to stay at 13.9 centimeters. Why? Because no one, their heights changed, but everyone's height changed at the same amount. So the average height went up, yes, the mean went up, but the dispersion from the mean stays the same. Because everyone shifted with the mean. So the next step here is we're going to look at mean and standard deviation from a frequency table. So there we go, we're going to look at this table, and we're going to have to plug all this in, and now we need two bars for this one. So I'm going to go back to my stat, edit my table, and I have zero, one, oh, zero, I look at this here, we have zero, one, two, three, four. Good, at exact the right amount. Here we're going to have five, ten, Four, three, one. Okay. Now, when I push this in, so step three, enter the values in list one corresponding to frequencies, the value, data values in list one, so number of hits, and the frequencies is in list two. So that's exactly what did. List one is my data. Frequency is always list two. Now we're going to go out of here, we're going to stat, and we have to calculate. And we have to go to list two. We have to put list two here. So I'm going to go, uh, where's my list two? 
second, that's two, enter, enter, that's to calculate. Here we go. So we have mean is 1.34. Now, then calculate the mean and standard deviation. So the standard deviation is 1.08. Okay? And that is what we get for this one. And standard deviation is equal to 1.08. Okay? There we go. Now we're going to look at the last class example before we start our assignment. It says, consider the histograms representing the class result of two math quizzes. So without doing any calculations whatsoever, remove the calculator. Which quiz do you think has a greater mean? Hmm. Well, looking at this, uh, why, if we look at this one here, I would say the mean is 3. For this one here, the mean is 5, I would say. Because the frequency is spread out and it's even across, the mean is going to be 5. The average is here. For this one here, the mean is going to be somewhere in here, I would say, which is 4 or 3. So I'm going to say 3. So I'm going to say this one right here, mark the statistics, has the greater mean. Statistics. Next one says, which one has the greater standard deviation? Well, we're going to look at averages from the mean. I look at this one here, and look how many are far from the mean. There's some here, some here. Well, they're, it's very spread out, isn't it? It kind of looks like that. Whereas this one is very straight up and straight down. So which one do you think has a greater standard deviation? Well, I look at this and what I drew, look how this always clusters around here. It goes very high here. This is very general. So I'm going to say once again, statistics has a greater standard deviation because it's more spread out. If I made a curve, it's very low. Okay? Now we're going to use the statistical feature in the graphing calculator to determine our result. So if I look at this, I'm just going to use statistic we're going to edit and we're going to edit it and it's we're going to put in here we have zero I'm going to clear both lists clear and clear the other list do not delete looking at this here now well move that up so we can see at we're starting at one I have one person frequency at one on one so we have at zero, so let's see, we have at one, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five. So there we go. Now we have to put in my frequencies. I have one. This one here is three, because I go across, frequency is three. Next one here is six. And I go four, and then I have one. So I'm going to go second quit. Get to my stats and list one, list two, enter, enter, enter. I have my mean is 3.06. I want to put the S for or S for quad, Q for quadratics is equal to 3.06, and my standard deviation is equal to. One. I'm going to just say one. It's 0.997, which is one. Now we're going to look at the second one. Edit. Clear this list. Enter. Clear the next list. And let's start entering them in. So we have three, four, five, six, and seven. Those are all my data. And how many for each one? We have three for each. Three, 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 three. Okay, back to stat list. Now let's take a look at this one. This one here, the mean is, like we said, for the statistics, the mean is equal to 5. Also, we take a look at my standard deviation, statistics, is equal to 
1.4. So the standard deviation is bigger. And we'll go back as to why. If we look at this, the, the mean, the central tendency, is right here. That's the mean. So it's 5, whereas this one was 3. Our standard deviation, well, if I look at this, it comes very close. It's a very narrow. If I was to graph this and put a line, it's very narrow up and down. Whereas this one's very fat and wide like that. So therefore, this has a smaller standard deviation than that. Okay? So, good luck tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow as we work on these with our calculator.